Welcome back to Uprising. I'm Sonali Gohatkar. If you've done a lot of traveling outside the United States, one of the differences that might jump out at you when you eat out or travel by taxi is that the culture of tipping people for services varies dramatically. For example, in Japan, tips are not only uncommon, they're considered insulting. In some countries like Germany, it is considered obligatory to tip regardless of the service. In places like Italy, restaurants put a cover charge on your bill in lieu of requiring a tip. Here in the United States, it's considered customary to tip at least 15% of your bill, but only if you've gotten good service. If you're really impressed, 20% is the norm. It's a curious custom, perhaps one that grew out of the personal responsibility mantra in the U.S. But what is curiouser is that it places the onus of payment onto the customer twice. You pay a company for service, and then you pay the worker you deal with what the company won't pay them. Such a system not only makes workers subservient to the whims of customers, but also allows companies to exempt themselves from paying a living wage. Tipped workers are often singled out for lower minimum wages than other workers. Recently, the Minnesota House passed a bill to lower the hourly wage of tipped workers to only $8 an hour, succumbing to the restaurant industry's lobbying. Nebraska rejected a bill that would have raised the wage for tipped workers to the same levels of other workers. And in California, there's a proposal to freeze the wages of tipped workers to $9 an hour if the minimum wage is increased to 13 my guest is Sophia Cheng, community organizer with the Restaurant Opportunity Center for Los Angeles, and Zumi Mizokami, a member of ROC who's had 10 years of experience in the restaurant industry. Welcome to Uprising, Sophia and Zumi. Well, let me ask you uh, first to explain how did we even get in this situation, Sophia? I mean, I, I sort of mentioned um, the various countries. Who decides how much to tip and why? You know, we wait, uh, uh, we, we uh, tip wait staff at a restaurant, but we don't tip grocery store clerks or cashiers uh, unless they help us with our bags. And even then, we're not sure. We tip hairdressers and car washers, but we don't tip gardeners or parking lot attendants. Or do we? Uh, we tip valets and doormen, but we don't tip concierges. Who decides? who gets tipped and why, who decides whose wages should remain low because they're not getting tipped. Um, thank you, Sonali, for having us on the show. And like you pointed out, the tipped workforce is a really diverse workforce. Here in Los Angeles, you know, 56% of the tipped workforce is actually outside of the restaurant industry. And like you said, a mm -hmm. lot of those are service jobs like hairdressers, car wash workers, hospitality people, people who clean. Um, so. You know, California is one of the few states that has just one fair wage, one minimum wage for all workers. And in other states in the U.S., 43 states, there's a tipped minimum wage. It's a sub-minimum wage for people who are tipped workers. And it's really the corporate restaurant lobby that has kept the tipped minimum wage, the federal tipped minimum wage, frozen at $2.13. So in California now, they want to create this two-tier system, right, where um, there is a pressure to raise the wages of workers but the restaurant industry wants to freeze the wages of tipped workers. Um, Zumi, can you tell us first a little bit about your experience in the restaurant industry? And is it really true that uh, tipped workers, as those in the restaurant industry claim, are getting well above $9 an hour, even more than $15 an hour because of all the tips that are apparently flowing into your pockets? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Um, well, there's a lot of misconceptions about tipped workers, and um, I think that Folks that are representing the restaurant industry um, as owners often are saying that uh, tipped workers are making $30, $40, $50 an hour because of their tips, um, which could be true for some people, but I think that that's a really small percentage of, um, of servers or of restaurant workers. So if and, you are working in the very yeah. high-end restaurants mm -hmm. and if, it, if you're counting just the uh, lunch hours maybe when there's lots of people um, and if you have a certain kind of clientele, then you might at certain times be getting $30, $40 an hour? Yeah, and I think that to get those jobs in fine dining restaurants, you have to fit a certain profile, mm. and that's racial and that's gendered as mm. well. So um, in the U.S., if you're going to be serving at a fine dining restaurant and you're going to be considered for that kind of position, then you're, you need to fit that profile. You need to be white and male and look very clean, and um, <laughs> you have to be able to, you have to, be able to um, portray what that clientele is going to. 